According to oral tradition, the Moai statues of Easter Island are linked to a place called Hiva, which is likely the Marquesas Islands. Archaeological evidence and the similarities between the Moai statues on Easter Island and the tikis in the Marquesas Islands suggest a shared cultural heritage and possible migration patterns. These statues symbolize deified ancestors, connecting the living with their forebears. Created to honor significant figures in Rapa Nui culture, the Moai ensured their legacy endured. How were the Moai statues? Created and transported? The process of creating the Moai involved several meticulous steps. Once the top and sides of the statue were completed, carvers would gradually undercut the statue, leaving a keel of rock along its underside attached to the mother rock. This keel was carefully chipped away until the statue rested on stone supports. Additional loose rock was placed under the back of the Moai to provide support until it was completely detached from the mother rock. Once the statues were detached from the rock, they were slid down the hill to lower areas of the quarry where there was soil. Here, a large pit was dug and the statue was placed into it. The quarry workers then carved petroglyphs, or rock art, onto the statue's back. These carvings often depicted symbolic or significant motifs, connecting the Moai to the island's cultural and spiritual beliefs. When a Moai was ready to be transported from the quarry, the soil in front of the statue was removed to create a path. The Moai roads of Easter Island form a network of paths connecting the quarry to various sites around the island. Family clans use these roads to transport the Moai statues, and over 25 kilometers of these paths are still visible today. Family clans cooperated to move and transport the statues, employing a system for dividing the land. Each family contributed to this collective effort. There are three main theories about how the Moai statues were moved. The first theory, known as walking the Moai, suggests that the statues were rocked upright using ropes. The second theory proposes that the statues were rolled on logs, with islanders pulling them using ropes tied to each side. The third theory involves the concept of mana. In Rapa Nui culture, mana is a source of strength, knowledge, and wisdom. According to oral tradition, mana enabled the Moai statues to be moved. Many believe that those who possessed mana could command the Moai to walk to their designated places. The concept of mana resonates with the divine abilities ascribed to Viracocha. According to local traditions recorded by Spanish conquistadors, advanced stone working techniques were part of the legacy passed down by the Andes creator god Viracocha, who would cause stones to be consumed by fire, making large blocks as light as feathers that could be floated into place. This sounds similar to the extreme heat theory, which suggests that intense heat or chemical processes might have been used to soften stones making them easier to shape. A theory proposed by Helmut Tribich examines the writings of early Spanish chroniclers, including Garcilaso de la Vega, 1609, and Cieza de Leon, 1553. They suggest that mortar was used in construction, specifically a reddish, sticky clay known as lanca culpa, which was transformed into an acidic paste. This substance was applied to soften the edges and faces of the rocks, and was pushed into the tiny gaps between the tightly fitted stones. The resulting stone walls exhibit a glazed appearance, with surfaces that refract and diffract light. Due to vitrification, these surfaces are remarkably smooth to the touch. In addition to this, another theory proposes that the mysterious nubs and holes on some ancient structures may have been created using high-voltage electrodes. These features, strategically located at critical structural points, suggest a heating process involving electrical rods. After the process, the nubs may have been formed in the stones, resembling the texture of warm cake batter as the electrodes were removed. The electrode holes might not only have been used to carve and fuse heated rocks, but also to lighten the stones for easier movement. By reversing the positive and negative electrodes, with the ground connection dissipating positive charges and a controlled positive charge above lifting the stone, the rocks could have been made lighter and more manageable to transport.